So I'm sitting in Hyderabad on the sets of Sardar Gabbar Singh with the one and only power star Pawan Kalyan. Uh, Mr. Kalyan, thank you for first of all talking to us. I believe you, you haven't given an interview in a long time. I feel a little shy to give interviews. <laughs> You're shy? <laughs> Not shy. I don't feel like talking much about myself. That's, why. That's the reason. You don't enjoy? Not that I don't enjoy. Somehow I feel I do my work and uh, just you know, go back. That's it. There's not much to say other than doing the work. That's what I feel. So I'm, I'm going to give the uninitiated a little bit of introduction to this personality sitting with me. Uh, 2016 is Mr. Kalyan's 20th year in the movies, but in two decades he's only done 20 films, which is which is not a lot at all. It's less. It's, it's very less. <laughs> And the, I mean, we could be here all day and I could be telling you about his box office and, and the fans that he has. But instead, I'm just going to read out a few of his dialogues, the most popular ones, to give you a sense of who this is. In one film, he says, just because a lion, of course, this is translated from Telugu, just because a lion is sleeping, you don't make a braid with its mane. I love it. <laughs> I don't follow trends, I create my own. And here's my personal favorite from the film Gabbar Singh. When the bad guy tells Mr. Kalyan, uh, you don't know how popular I am in this region, Mr. Kalyan replies, popularity is like a passing cloud. When the climate heats up, it will melt down. I am like the sky, rain or thunderstorm, I'll always be the same. <laughs> is that true of you? Are, you? are you the same? I don't know. For me, for a film, it's all... So can to entertain an audience, maybe that's how people write. Uh, at my personal level, I just don't think anything. I just do my job, that's it. I don't... Uh, uh, I happen to be an accidental actor, so I was not supposed to be an actor. Um, I read that you liked gardening and you wanted... Yeah, to actually my passion was uh, gardening and farming. Maybe I wanted, to be, I wanted to be a farmer all through my life. Except that I could become uh, other things, except that. <laughs> Still, I try a little in uh, uh, farming and gardening. So, you were a reluctant, accidental actor, but you're doing such an amazing job of it. And, and you know, which is why you're called the power star. And what I love about that label is it says so much in such a short time. But ah. the truth is, you're not just an actor. You're I looked at your movie credits. It says stunt choreographer, playback singer, writer, director. You're so many things. I think all happened because of uh, necessity. I had my limitations. I have my own limitations even now. And when people try to put me in their imagination, and I was struggling to fit into it. But instead of, uh, in the process, I was ending up as uh, someone which I couldn't uh, deliver the goods. So I was thinking, like as I said, if it is me, I can... This is not my area of expertise. Or this is my area of uh, something which I can do. So what I used to do is what I can do. So I can do this. I used to give the inputs or something. At least I made myself comfortable to do what they had given. So I used to adopt a little here and there. That's what that's what start, that's how it started off. And later I think uh, I got the hang of it. Then I was continuing. You make it sound very simple. <laughs> but actually, <laughs> I'm sure it's not as easy as that. No, they don't let it happen. So you'll have a lot of <laughs> a lot of struggle and fight. Like yeah, no, I'm saying simple, but. In the process, it's not simple. You have to have a lot of uh, uh, kind of uh, arguments, uh, but somehow I used to convince them. <laughs> you know what convincing means. <laughs> you ever think that as, as because you're so big and, and they love you in ways that are beyond your movies, um, do you always have to play the upright good person? <laughs> Definitely, I don't like to play as a... I'm very clear about certain things. I don't like to play as a, a bad guy. There are no bad guys in this world. The complete bad is not there. It's only shades of grey. There's no complete good. It's shades of grey. And also, I was, I'm not a great actor in such... that where I can transform into uh, another character, where I completely... from the previous film to another film, I can tra transform myself into another... I can't do that. Because I'm not a trained actor. So happy being what I can do it. That's all I can say. In an interview, Steven Spielberg had said that uh, his biggest problem was that nobody would say no to him because he was so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that. So is that a problem you face that nobody ever says no to you? I'm aware of myself. I know my own limitations. I tell them, I said, I'm not able to do this. Could you help me? But they think, okay, you, you, you do a lot of things I think you know. Like I take, I pick up uh, cues from anyone, any small solution, I take it. 
they restrain and they confine themselves by not able to give me the right input. Some because I'm a popular, I'm a known actor. That doesn't mean I know everything. Most of the time, I try to keep seeking uh, inputs from different, uh, even no matter who they are, whatever they are, even a little inexperienced, but still they come out of the brilliant ideas. So I try to keep uh, re reaching out to them. You listen. I, I do. I do. Really, because what happens when you reach this level of power and popularity is you start to live in a world which is in a way not real because you know there's so many barriers around you have you consciously tried to get away from that when we know there is something beyond us one who created us so you're it will humble you i don't know after my third film they took me to a, 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 one of the uh, cities and they were asking me like i said we got a, a open top uh, vehicle for you to go to that venue and it was a function, like it's a big function. I said, why, why it is needed? They said, a lot of people are going to come. I said, who's going to come and look at me? And actually, when I went, there's hordes of people were there. I was wondering, like, what is the difference between me and them? I said, what's uh, one two sides of the same coin? I said, uh, destiny has put me here. Said, so there's no difference between me and them. So I, I don't have to take it to my head. When I trace the thought back, maybe there are so many people involved for to give me that experience that I'm able to deliver. Who enabled you to do it? Who made me to do it? Oh yeah, who could? But Mr. Kalan, you've really led such an <coughs> unconventional life. I mean, every sphere of your life, personally, uh, professionally, you launched your political party, Janasena, but you know, you're, you're clearly not, and you said that in your speech at, at the inaugural of the party, that you're not here for a post or you're not here for power. You're like a conscience keeper. Someone should be, somehow, I don't know, somehow, the, a lot of thoughts, they keep choking me. I say a lot of big dialogues in uh, films, you know. And I say it with such a conviction when I'm saying it, actually believe in when I'm saying it. So I keep wondering, how come, when I say with such conviction in films, how come in uh, real life incidents, how come I'm so scared? That questions me. And I have that kind of, uh, I can't face myself. So I think that's what, made me restless, that's what choked me, In not just in one year, all through my childhood, that's what, I had a lot of opinions to say, maybe I want to say something, I want to be bold, I want to be fearless when something is happening, maybe that made me to go into a little into politics, maybe a little here and there, I think that's how the genesis of uh, genesis, I think. In that inaugural speech, you said that home is far. You quoted Tilak. Yeah, Mr. Tilak, yeah. Yeah, and you said uh, home is far and there is darkness yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but still there is courage. Is that true for you? Is that is that what you have, courage? Courage is almost is a muscle which expands. If you use it. If you use it. So we pump a lot of iron, we can grow muscle, but the muscle of courage, it's always you have to exercise on it. And always, the courage is always, it can stretch, you can stretch. Maybe today the level of courage for one point of time is not the same for another incident. Again, you have to live up to it. Now that I want to stretch my limits, maybe a situation comes, I don't want to step back. I don't want to. I would like to face, I would like to have an opinion, okay. That's how it is. Do you ever feel that you're risking anything by going into that arena? Even uh, risking means if it is about the cost of life, we risk a lot, so many, even if a, a simple uh, uh, horse riding, even sometimes we go through a lot of uh, uh, kind of electrical uh, short circuits and all, like, you know, so in that kind of, in that way, if you look at it, danger is lurking everywhere. So for me, I said, and that too, if we are, anyhow, we are about to die at any, at any point of our time, so why can't we say something and just do it? I think that's how it's not love. But you know, for especially for film stars in this country, it's very difficult to actually be political because there's so many possibilities of sort of bad effects. You know, um, mm, films yeah. get banned, that's this true, happens. That's true. You don't seem afraid of that. Films is not the end of life. Films is just a part of my life. And for me, the life is more bigger than cinema. If you weigh which one, what is expressing is more essential than keeping quiet. I prefer to express myself, no matter whatever the cost is. But it's not that I will be foolish. I choose and also I, I, I go through a lot of thinking process. It's not that I want to irritate people. It's not that I want to make people angry. I said, if there is some kind of imbalance or injustice, I want to put it in such a way uh, to make them understand. You're not seduced by your own superstardom? I never believed myself as I'm a, for me it is God given or uh, it just happened to me. You know, I was uh, reading up about your fans and they call themselves Pavanists and they believe in Pavanism. I don't know how it came, so <laughs> for, for me, you know, sometimes I find it strange. But 
do you ever stop and introspect about why they love you so much? Maybe all of us, all of us look for some kind of um, role models. And I know maybe role model is too big a word. But I never did it consciously. I just did it for myself. Not for that someone is going to, it's going to be good for someone. But what I will do, that's what I could do. You followed your heart. I followed my heart. You're handling success very well, but you also handled failure very well. I mean, after the stupendous success of Khushi, you went through almost, what, 10 years when there wasn't really a big blockbuster. How did you deal with that? I think uh, much before I entered into films, uh, I, I was telling you, accidentally I was pushed into films. For me, for me, films, if I could do it passionately, was like, you know, whatever job uh, was, uh, will be given to me, I do it uh, with uh, complete dedication. It's not something I don't waver. So when films happen to me, what, how best I can be? That's what I was trying. So when I was doing it, I used to go and tell my mother. I said, you know, Ma, I used to call Ma, you know what's happening? These guys are paying me money and they're letting me do what I like. So for me, even if they don't pay me money, I said, I'm very fine because I'm able to do something which I like. So when I was enjoying that process, I'm more grateful for that process. So always I was thanking, uh, I don't know, so always right from my childhood, I believed in the supreme uh, nature. It's not something of formless God, it's not something of God of form or something, but always I believe something higher, a higher power. So I said, I'm a hardly a high school dropout, and how come life is able to give me this much? So it is not my capacity, it's not my intelligence, it's not my abilities. Something happened to me. So that made me, even if I was success, I was getting uh, success one after the other, I was always scared. I know this is not mine, it was given to me. Tomorrow a failure comes and also don't own it. Don't own this success and don't own that failure. I think that's how I went through my failures. And do you plan to direct again? For me, directing a film is confining myself. I prefer to do beyond the director. I know a lot of talent is there, I can... Uh, Conceive, write, scroll stories and screenplays, that is more better for me. But you're also captain of the ship. Or are you captain of the ship anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Films, reviews and conversations, we've got it all on Film Companion. Hit that button below and get your film fix.